Dias, mis amigos. Right, I want to go through a, a comment here um, from yesterday, but before I do that, I just got a couple of things I want to show you here. And <clears throat> on my timeline, I saw that there are three people, three people that I subscribe to, are talking about Pope Francis and how he's somehow he's endorsing uh, this one world religion and uh, well I watched <laughs> to see what the Pope actually says because it's incredible I've noticed I stopped caring what he what they say he says um, because what he actually says and then what people report are don't always square with each other right and so I watched um, the video uh, of him uh, just a small clip of it and he says there's a there's one God he says there's one God well I say there's one God okay and Jesus said there's one God a lot of people in the Bible and the Exodus 19 or Exodus uh, oh goodness sakes Exodus 20 verse 3 says thou shalt have no gods before me there's one God thou shalt have no other gods before me right so there's only one God so when the Pope says there's one God <laughs> He's not doing anything wrong. Somehow people are turning this into, oh, it's a declaration of a coming one world religion. Oh, we're all going to be united in one religion. And what in the world is going on in your mind to think that all of a sudden there's only going to be one religion and you're going to bow down to the Pope. Hey, what are you saying? Are you hoping or wishing for this to come into existence? What are you saying? It's weird. It's odd. Why? Why would you even... Why? Why would you even suggest this is a possibility? I don't understand it. This is fantasy land stuff. Would you watch a movie? Did I miss the movie or something? I didn't see the movie, so I don't know what's going on. Uh, I read the book. <laughs> I know what the book says. All right, and furthermore, I know I understand what it says. So, here's the issue. And you, if anybody that's been paying attention to me uh, at all, really, has probably heard me say time and time again, that these people are waiting for Dan Rather and Peter Jennings to come on television and announce, oh, the Antichrist is here. They are. I've been saying that for a long time. But that's never going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's right there in the Bible. It doesn't matter... If it does happen, it wouldn't matter. If it didn't happen, that wouldn't matter either. What matters is what the Bible says. It doesn't matter what happens at 6 o'clock news, man. But that's what people are waiting for. Well, the, the Antichrist can't be here because Dan Rather didn't tell me. Well, you know, I've been <laughs> I've been saying that for a long time, man. For a long time. That's never going to happen. But somehow, somehow, these air brains, dough heads, can't th use their brain cells to think. Hey, wait a second. Why would I believe that? <laughs> Why would I speak those words? The hey, we're just waiting around for the six o'clock news to tell us the Bible's true. 
What? what the, the, there's something going on in the Bible? Well, well now, this is fulfilled in the Bible. Oh, that's never going to happen, man. These guys, the, the news, they're not the prophets of God. That, that's what the way people view the television, as though it's the voice of God. That's never going to happen. All right, it's never going to happen. This idea, Dan Rather coming on television saying, hey, the Bible's starting to be fulfilled. It's never, ever, ever, ever going to happen. Amen. Exciting times we live in to see the Bible coming true day by day on the 6 o'clock news. Amen? Right there, man. <laughs> At least he comes right out and says it. Man, I'm hoping he reflects back on this moment and says, wait a second. What the H-E double hockey sticks is wrong with me? That television does nothing but lies. And somehow now, what... You declare in front of God and everybody that that television is the voice of God. And God says, blah, 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 blah. So what, 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 <laughs> what six o'clock news tell you? That what, what, what exactly did the six o'clock news tell you? It's it might have shown you a clip of Francis saying there's one God. And then he's got some false teachings also, and I heard him, and I get it. He's calling, it, he's calling us all sons of God, and there's uh, different languages to God, and there are different paths to God. I get it. But the fact that he says there's one God... There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. And so, just because whatever he says, it doesn't matter. Is he your God? Is he your ruler? Does he somehow determine anything for you? Whether he says it or doesn't say it doesn't matter. Does it does it matter what he says? In other words, is the Bible going to be dictated by what he says? Or does he say what he says, does it dictate what's in the Bible? No and no. No and no. It doesn't matter at all what he says. All right, he's only here for a short time, and then he's going to be done away with. But the word of the Lord endures forever. So what matters? The word of the Lord. That's what matters. It don't matter what Dan Rather says. It don't matter what Francis says. It really don't matter what either one of us say. If it's not consistent with the Bible... It will not endure forever. Okay. All right. So uh, to me, it's just interesting because I, for so long, I've been saying, hey, you're waiting for Dan Rather to come on the news to tell you the Antichrist is here. Well, the Antichrist has been here for a long time, a long, long time. And you can't get around the fact that Daniel talks about four beasts until the end of the world. And he names the first three beasts. Babylonian, the Medes and Persian, and the Greek or Grecia Empire. And we know by reading, uh, for example, Luke chapter 2, verse 1, when Caesar decreed that the whole world should be taxed. By that, we know that the Romans were in power. It, you know, there's more than just that, but we can, it's pretty simple. It's pretty easy to figure out. In the New Testament, the Romans are in power, so therefore the Romans have to be 
the fourth beast of Daniel. And Daniel makes it clear there's four beasts until the end of the world. There's not a fourth beast and then the United States after that and then the, the Roman Catholic Church takes over after that and then the Australians take over after that. And then it's the Japanese turn. No, it's the Roman Empire. When we read, in, for example, in Revelation 17, the beast that was, and is not, and yet is, that's the transition from the physical empire into the spiritual empire. That's the transition from the Roman Empire into the Roman Catholic Church. All right, the, the deadly wound that was healed, that's also the transition from the Roman Empire, the physical empire, into the spiritual empire known today as the Roman Catholic Church. It, be, for one thing, the world has not come to an end. There's not a pause. Well, well nobody's in power now. That, that, that's not consistent with Daniel or anything in the Bible. It's the Romans that are in power. They were in power in the time of Jesus, and they're still in power today. And it's just it's silly and ridiculous to say, well... Let's see, <clears throat> the United States is somehow the Roman Catholic, or the, the, Roman, the Roman Empire. Well, see, it went from um, the Romans, uh, and, and then it went into the the, uh, the English, you know, the Great Britons, and then, the, and then somehow they just handed it over to the, you know, Ronald Reagan or something. I, I mean, come on, man. You're missing it. You're missing the whole thing. And I contend it's because you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. And what happens today more so than ever are people listening to false teachers rather than listening to the voice, to the voice of God, which is the Bible. The Bible that they hold in their hands. All right, because that's going to play out to be true. What Dan Rather and all the others say doesn't matter. What matters is what's in that book. Okay. All right. So here, I just real quickly uh, just want to give you another example of another false teacher. And this is every single day, and it's all of them. Greetings, we continue today our study of the book of Revelation. We'll be considering verses 4 through 6 from chapter 20. And the title is, The Thousand Year Reign of Righteousness. Okay, so it depends on your definition of righteousness. The thousand years of righteousness. All right, the thousand years of righteousness. Righteousness where people that believe in Jesus will be getting their heads cut off. What a glorious, <clears throat> glorious time. And the only thing better is when fire comes down from God and devours the camp of the saints, the beloved city. I mean, there's nothing better than that, huh? Oh, what a glorious, glorious time. Just a thousand years of righteousness. So you believe in Jesus, you're getting your head cut off. Boy, looking forward to that, huh? The only thing is, that's not what it says. I mean, if you're going to ignore one thing, why not? Why can't I ignore a, a one thing? <clears throat> right? I mean, you're calling it a thousand years of righteousness? Well, why can't I say it's a thousand years of. Uh, you know, the, the, why can't I say the righteousness is those of us that believe in Jesus, we're all going to get our heads cut off? Uh, what's the difference? Because that's not what it says. I'm wrong, and but you're also wrong. But it doesn't say. It doesn't say a thousand years of righteousness at all. What are you insane? What? Are you, what then? Then what happens? At the end of the thousand years, fire comes down from God and destroys all. Of, destroys the city of God. The camp of the saints, it devours us. The fire, 
devours. What, I mean, what in the world? Do it, does it even matter what it says? Just as long as there's a word there and a word there, we can say whatever we want? I mean, if he can say whatever he wants, then I can say whatever I want, right? It doesn't matter. This stuff is, it, it's such a strange, strange time that we live in because uh, it, it's quite, it's quite obvious <laughs> that the thousand years is right now, that Jesus is the first resurrection. He is the first begotten of the dead, the first fruit of them that slept. He is our leader. He has led the way for us, and we will follow him. He is resurrected and ascended to heaven, and we will follow him and meet him in the air. Our resurrection happens at the end of the world, just like it's said over and over all throughout the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. That's when we are resurrected. First the dead in Christ, and then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right, so... Uh, to me, it's just interesting. I, I mean, <laughs> people don't care what the Bible says. They care about what the movie said. Now, I didn't see the movie, so I don't know what it says. All right, so I want to get into this comment. Uh, speaking of the resurrection, uh, Anthony Polanke, 2681. All right. Um, he, uh, he's got a great uh, comment here. I appreciate this very much. I'll read the comment and then I'll share some of my thoughts. First of all, Anthony says, So I haven't got time to finish the video right now, but I got to the part where you cite Jesus saying we won't marry or given marriage in the resurrection, and you seem to want to take that as we will have no romantic relations of any kind or what I call dirty, stinky sex. It, romantic relations is probably a better way to put it, right? It's cleaner, sounds better. But it's the same thing, right? Which you then use to proof text further things, right? I just have to draw attention to the fact that isn't what Jesus meant in regards to it. The Sadducees. The Sadducees, the Sadducees. Not what you mean is the sad, the sad you sees. I don't know what the Sadducees is. I have to assume you're talking about the sad you sees. I, I don't know where you're, you're getting this. I'll get into that later. Uh, I don't know where that's coming from. I find it very curious though. Because I think I count three times. You spelled it incorrectly all three times. Exactly the same each time. Doesn't matter. I'm, it doesn't matter, but I, I just wonder what in the world are you, what's going on here? Oh, where are you getting that from? I assume you didn't just make that up, that you're getting it from something. I don't know what you're getting it from. It's Sadducees. Right, I'll get into that later. The Sadducees were trying to catch Jesus in a trap with the law of Moses. The specific one, in this case, being the marriage stipulations of the Mosaic laws. Am I saying that right? Mosaic laws? One of which states that if a man dies without having any children with his wife, then his wife is supposed to be taken on by his brother, or next of kin, and they are supposed to impreg impregnate her and raise the child under his brother's name so that his heritage, herit heritage doesn't die out. 
All right. The Sadducees proposed a situation that this law is followed in where each time the woman is wed to the next of kin, they die without impregnating her up until the seventh man dies without giving her a child, and then she dies. The Sadducees then ask in the resurrection whose wife she ought to be according to the law of Moses. Jesus sets them straight by describing how in the resurrection no marriage laws from the law of Moses will apply, especially this one. Since everyone will be immortal and never die, such laws of Moses are in place only because we live in a world of death where preserving the lineage of someone is necessary. But in the world of the resurrection, where everyone is immortal, preserving family lines is nothing to be concerned about. So, any laws toward that end, such as the ones of the, such as the one the Sadducees were trying to trap Jesus with won't be needed, and will not apply. Uh, so four times. Four times he'd use that word. So that you know, just sticks out to like a sore thumb. Well, what's going on here? So I had to look it up. I don't see anything at all. It's Sadducees. Nobody's, nobody's saying Sadducees I don't, that I can find. right? And I even looked in my New Jerusalem Bible, which has uh, got all kinds of different uh, goofy wordings in it. And it's not there either. Got curious. Anthony Palunque. Alright, got curious. I, if you maybe made some videos on this. No, nothing. I got curious. What, who is this Anthony Palunque? Is he searchable? Uh, right there. Is that him right there? Anthony Palunque, is that you right there? Your beautiful wife. You just got married. Right, and... What is that? Uh, three months ago? I hope things uh, con continue to be great for you. I really do. I really... This beautiful moment for you guys. And that's fantastic that you guys got married. You better stay married. That's my advice. You better stay married. Well, why not? Yeah. Why not? Stay married. Yeah, I'd like to talk an hour about that. You know, why why cheat on that beautiful, precious woman right there? Why would you? You don't want her to cheat on you, so don't cheat on her. Right? Why not stay faithful and committed and grow your relationship? And why not? Why not do things right? You want to be different? <laughs> do things right. Right. We live in a world where this is just an, for a lot of people, this is just an announcement, hey, we're dating now. You know what I mean? It's like people don't take this serious. This is supposed to be forever. You now, these two are now one flesh. Right? Of course, who am I to speak on it? I've never married. <laughs> so I don't have any business, but I just wish that people would stay married. They believe me, you don't want to end up 54 years old with no wife. I guarantee it. All right, so might as well stay married. Ah, that this world is so corrupt. I get it. It's tough. It's difficult for young people to stay married. It's it's even difficult just to get to that point to where they do marry. So I'm I'm glad. I'm happy for you. I wish you well, Anthony. You and your beautiful wife. I hope you guys just stay together. Work it out. You're going to have problems. Just work it out. Just work it out. All right. So, oh, right there. Anthony Palunque, 2681. Let's go. Anthony Palunque, 2681. All right, found you. So that's you. That is for sure you. And so I don't know. I still don't know where you got Sadducees from. 
right? Still don't know? But <laughs> you're a Catholic, so of course you're not going to understand the Bible because you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. So let's try to make this uh, uh, simple for Anthony or whoever else. Um, might still be watching, right? And the, and, uh, this, uh, the thing that Anthony brings up is from Matthew 22. Oh, and I even went and said, okay, hey, look, there's Matthew 22, 23. Where is the Sadducees coming from? All right, and it's not, it's not there, right? It's not, it's not anywhere. All right, just, I went through and looked all, I went through and looked all through all these, and then I got out my New Jerusalem Bible, and I couldn't find it anywhere. I mean, it's just curious to me because four times, four times, Sadducees, 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 and then again, down here, Sadducees. Spell the same every single time. I'm not sure where it's coming from. Just curious. To me, that's just a curious thing. That's all. Okay, so anyways, Matthew 22. All right, this is the where the Sadducees, um, they did come at Jesus. Anthony's right about that. They came at Jesus trying to uh, find fault in him. Right, but Jesus, uh, uh, he out he he outdid him again, right? He outdid him again, and so he, they proposed this situation where there's seven women. Ridiculous, but still, it's a situation. That you have to be ready for an answer. Even as a Christian, you have to always be ready for an answer. Isn't there a Bible verse or something like that? Always be ready. Always be ready. Let's see if I can remember it. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Right. Always be ready. And so Jesus, of course, is ready. All right. And Jesus said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the Scripture, nor the power of God. And Anthony, ye do err, not knowing the Scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. <clears throat> Alright, so when this right here they neither marry, it's talking about the man, excuse me. <clears throat> Pardon. That's the man marrying a woman, right? And then given in marriage is the man giving his daughter in marriage. It, just in case, look, people don't know. That's why I, can, I want to bring it up to make make sure everybody knows. That's what that means. Okay. Just like what we read in Genesis six. All right. So, verse thirty-one. But as Touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. All right, so when the multitude heard this, they were astonished. At his doctrine, but when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Okay. So then they they came at him, right? Now, let's go back. In the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. All right, so the angels, they never have sex. Ever, 
That's number one. The resurrection is at the end of the world. Okay? There is no other time for our resurrection. Our resurrection happens at the end of the world. Jesus has resurrected from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. He is the first begotten of the dead. He is the first resurrection. And of course, in Matthew 24, Jesus is asked, What is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And the end of the world is when he comes in the clouds of heaven. And when he comes in the clouds of heaven, he sends his angels to gather us together. Right? Isn't like it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, First the dead in Christ shall rise, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right, so consider this in 1 Corinthians 15. Christ is the first fruits, right? The first begotten of the dead, the first fruits of them that slept, right? And then afterward, when Jesus Christ comes in the clouds of heaven, then are we resurrected. All right? Can you follow me on this? Then comes the end. All right, that when we're lifted up, and then the Lord stomps his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying evil forever. Fire is going to come down from God out of heaven and devour all the unsaved people. All right? You follow me on this? Because th this is in the Bible over and 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 over again. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over. It's overwhelming. If you don't know this, you don't know the Bible at all. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of this world. And judgment is given upon this world. And just as God destroyed the world by water in the days of Noah, God will destroy this world by fire. All right. So, when this happens, you know what else happens? There's no more sex. All right, you follow me, Anthony? There is no more sex. There is no more sex. Why? Because there's no more death. All right? The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death and because there is no more death there is no more sex uh, there's no more giving life and babies being judged saved or unsaved uh, the the judgment of God is once and for all at the end of the world consider this behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkle of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed all right, so when this uh, corruptible puts on incorruption, this mortal puts on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. See, this goes, this goes all the way back to the old, uh, I mean, really it goes back to Genesis 3, verse 15, but it, um, here, let me show you. Uh, Isaiah 25, he will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. 
from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken it. Of course, this is consistent with what we read in 1 Corinthians 15 and also, of course, in Revelation 21. Right. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Right? Same thing we just read there in Isaiah 25. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. So, think about this. When we are resurrected and the unsaved are destroyed forever, the second death, right, they will die forever. And all that is left is the saved upon a new earth with new heavens. That's all that's left. That's all that remains. And we live for all eternity. All right, so, look, you're, you're preaching this idea that for all eternity we're going to be having, what, orgies? Or, or just uh, sex between you and your wife? Because if you're going to say that you just it's going to be sex between you and your wife for all eternity then that goes against what Jesus says in Matthew 22. All right, so let's just imagine for a second, this woman has seven husbands. So which of the seven husbands will she be having sex with for all eternity? Can you figure that one out? All right, so you're claiming you're going to be having sex for all eternity. Is that the woman you're going to be having sex with for all eternity? Or are you going to say, no, there's no marriages in heaven, so you can have sex with whoever you want? Have you put any thought into this, Anthony? Have you put any thought into it all, at all? Or are you just trying to follow along with the scripts that the Roman Catholic Church gives you? Because I know that's what they do. They're well studied. They got a response for everything. Uh, as illogical as it may seem, they got a response for everything. So you want to get your script out and and try to figure out what your response is now, Anthony. What are you supposed to say now? All right, so be interested to see how you might spin it. All right, and if, really, it's interesting. Are you buying it? Are you buying what the Roman Catholics are telling you? First John chapter two: Love not the world. And neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth for ever. Okay? The world passes away. That's when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. The sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven whose face the heaven and earth fled away. There will be a new heavens and a new earth where there is no lust. All right, so we got no lust, which is the same thing as no marriage. Again, just from a simple, logical standpoint, you can't have no marriages and still have sex. 
Now, this ain't Hollywood orgyville. All right. Is that what you're putting your hope into, Anthony? Just be honest, man. You're a young guy, and, you, and all you think about is sex 24-7, right? I get it. I get it. But think about it. Maybe you're not old enough yet. I, I get that. When I was young, boy, there wasn't nobody more dumb than me. Guarantee it. But there's a world that waits that is much, much better than this this sex stuff that we're consumed with in this world. And I, I've said it for a while now. Sex is overrated. People are putting too much stock into sex. You're watching HBO and Cinemax all the time, and all you see is sex, sex, sex. Turn on the 6 o'clock news, and all you see is sex, sex, sex. And is that Maybe that's why people watch the 6 o'clock news. I don't even know. I don't watch it. Not anymore, I don't. I don't even care what they say. It doesn't matter to me. Sex is overrated. Now, to properly understand this, all you have to do is go to Genesis 3. Man, if you, I wonder, did, maybe you haven't gotten this far yet. Is that possible? I, you know, maybe I'm being a little bit too antsy here. I'm trying to get on you here to read a little bit more. Maybe you just haven't gotten to this part of the Bible yet. But it's the third chapter of the Bible. So I kind of expect you to get to, to read this. I kind of expect that out of people. So the serpent is more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And the serpent beguiled Eve and convinced her to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And she did it. And then Adam did it. And God found out, and then God said, Because thou hast done this, I will, um, let's see, because, let me get this in order, uh, because, because, the, because the, the serpent, thou, because the serpent has done this, um, I will cause you to uh, lay on your belly, and then I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is a prophecy of the end of the world, where there is no more evil. See, we now we have the knowledge of good and evil, and then there's going to be a there has to be a separation. All right, and the evil. Is going to be cut off, and the serpent represents uh, the, the absence of God, and getting the God is God, right? So there's going to be a separation where evil is going to be separated from good forever and ever and ever, because this was done; it had to be done. There was no other choice, really. It was going to happen, and it's further evidence that we need a savior. Because Adam and Eve couldn't do it. The people couldn't do it after the days of Noah. And the days after Noah. And people still can't do it on their own even today. We, we need a savior. All right, And then to the woman. The Lord says, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. And he shall rule over thee. This is because they ate from the tree of the garden, um, ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because they did that, now they have children. All right, and but once this separation, this judgment, this division is made. They will no longer be having children. They weren't having children before this. 
And they're only having children because of this, because they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And because of that, uh, um, and because of that, in the sweat of thy face, to Adam, he says, uh, shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou, I'm sorry, unto dust shalt thou return. Alright, so, because they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they're having children, which means they're having dirty, stinky sex. Alright, that's another one. Or romantic relationships. That's probably a better way to put it. Because they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they had romantic relations. And they're going to die. That's part of the deal. That's the deal. Because they ate from the, the tree that they were forbidden to eat from, now you got to have romantic relations and die. But, glory to God, glory be to God, that's coming to an end. There's coming a time when all that's going to be done away with. It's all going to be done away with. The world is going to pass away and the romantic relationships thereof are going to pass away. Alright, we're going to take off this corruption, this corruptible, this mortal. And we're going to put on incorruption. And we're going to put on immortality. And then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, it's quite simple, don't you see? It's quite simple. We have romantic relations now because of what happened in the Garden of Eden, because Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so also, not only do we have romantic relations, but we also die because of it. Because they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That, the romantic relations and death, are going to be done away with. Now, do you need, do you really need God to say, God will do away with, oh, wait a second, get back there. God will do away with dirty, stinky sex. Is that what you need to say? Because John said it. And the world passes away and the lust thereof. Uh, what more do you need? You need the phrase, dirty, stinky sex? Is that what you need? I mean, if you can't figure, you got really, you got no excuse. You really don't. Look, people are obsessed when they have a worldview that, hey, man, sex forever, sex forever. I don't care what you say. I believe that there's going to be sex forever. It doesn't matter what you say, right? They're going to believe what they want, whether it's the truth or not. They don't care, but I do care. I care about the truth. The truth does matter. And the truth is going to play out that way. You're going to be wrong. And the truth is going to be right. And the truth is, there is no more death. There is no more romantic relations. The world that is coming is much greater. Much greater than the world we're living in now. 
Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Is not of the Father, but is of the world, and the world passes away in the lust there. Ah. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold. I make all things new. Behold, I make all things new. These words are true and faithful.